Portfolio Composer, Episode 154. You're listening to the Portfolio Composer Podcast with your host and coach, Garrett Hope, where he teaches you what it takes to master the business end of writing music through mindset, marketing, and business skills. Make sure to sign up for the newsletter at theportfoliocomposer.com for exclusive offers, business insights, and information not shared on the podcast. And now for this episode of The Portfolio Composer. Welcome to The Portfolio Composer. I am Garrett Hope. This is a twist on our traditional episode format where I was actually on Dennis Tabensky's music publishing podcast. And if you have not checked that out yet, I really encourage you to do it. It's a great show also on the business of being a composer. And Dennis is a great friend of mine and helps me out in innumerable ways. But Dennis has a really cool project coming up and he's made a wonderful call for scores for composers. I wanted to share this opportunity with you. So the audio you're going to hear is actually the broadcast from Dennis's podcast where he allows me to be the host of his show. So it's um, a little bit of a recursive theme here, but I hope you get a lot out of this and I encourage you to check out New Music Shelf and submit your art songs to his anthology project. Hello, and welcome to the Music Publishing Podcast. Uh, I'm here today, uh, not as your main host, but as your your guest. Um, <laughs> we, we've, I've got guest host, Garrett Hope. Garrett, Hola. Garrett, um, welcome to hosting the show. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure, Dennis. <laughs> so uh, today, um, Garrett's sort of going to be host slash avatar for... Um, some for from me talking about uh, some things uh, I've been teasing for months now. Some announcements about um, some some special projects and things that I wanted you all to know about. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, some some cool stuff. Garrett's been hearing about this for months <laughs> and helping me to work out some of the kinks. So uh, yeah, thank you for that, Garrett. Hey, that's what that's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and thanks for agreeing to like guest host. Uh, you know, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, well, I you know you and I were talking about it, and um, we, you were kind of saying that there's all these questions that you're getting from composers, and mm-hmm. I thought, well, I'm a composer. Yeah. I have questions. Yeah. Why don't I ask you some of these things, and you. You can answer them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and it's so funny, like, with this, we're, we're, we're dancing around the topic, which is great. It's wonderful podcasting. Um, <laughs> I was, you know, really trying to think, who, who can I talk to about this? There's so many, like, possibilities that are like, you know, this person is the wrong fit. That person's the wrong fit. This person, I don't even want people to know who this person is yet. <laughs> so, Garrett, perfect choice. Um, so the, the, the big thing that we're here to to talk about this week, or one of the, there there are two related things. Um, one is a, a business that I run that I want to like open up to everybody. Um, I want you all to know about it because it's, um, I think a a good thing for the community. There are a couple of other businesses like this. Um, it's called new music shelf. Mm -hmm. Um, so new music shelf is, um, Here's, here's the elevator pitch, and I learned how to do this elevator pitch at um, the New Music Gathering. I got some, some help there, so... Okay, let's hear it. All right. New Music Shelf is an online marketplace for self-published composers to sell digital d- editions of their scores and parts. All right, let's... Let's, let's break that down. Pull it a little bit, okay? okay so <laughs> the first thing you said was online marketplace. Yes. What does that mean? It's a website. <laughs> it's a website. Okay. It's a website. Um, so yeah, people, if uh, composers go to newmusicshelf.com, dot um, it's an online store, and um, I invite composers to you know become members of this this site um, and become a vendor so that you can upload copies of your um, you know PDFs of your scores and parts. It's digital only um, to to sell it to to actually make money off of your work, which can be very difficult to do. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's. I, I mean, I have a piece that's ready to go up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've already invited me to be a member of New Music Shelf, and I'm really excited about it because uh, it seems to me that New Music Shelf ha- kind of has a target audience. Yes. Uh, who is that? Um, depending on which side of the equation, um, for composers, it's concert music composers um, who you know write original music, um, and on the other hand, on the other side, it's performers who want who want to find new works um, that aren't within the traditional publishing um, apparatus. They're not in that ecosystem of like, you can go to Hal Leonard and see stuff published by any of the major publishers or, you know, go to Boozy and Hawks and see that whole catalog. We don't, as self-published composers, we don't have that. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's often the first place that performers go because that's where they know that they're going to find something they're going to find things that have been sort of curated and this this is a sort of a community project of bringing coming together bringing our works together and and um being discoverable okay so you said a word just there that i'm really interested in curated mm-hmm. because that's that's part of the benefit of going to a published resource because mm-hmm. there's been an editor who's filtered out the wheat from the chaff, supposedly. Supposedly. Right? Uh, so how are you handling that? What, what's, your, what's your plan? My plan? Um, so one of the, the sole, the, of, of all the criteria for you know, getting on um, the site, I, I don't, like, I'm... I'm so excited about this, I can't even friggin' talk about it. <laughs> I'm like stumbling over myself. Um, never give There's me... There's a wet spot on your pants, too. I, I know, yeah. Never give me a microphone. It's a bad idea. Um, so with traditional publishers, you know, hopefully they'll want your stuff, um, and there's often a stylistic component to it. Um, new music shelf, I don't care what style you write in. Um, I kind of care that your a good communicator <laughs> and can, you know, ask to be in, involved in a way that's not um, dickish and, um, and can present your music well. That's the, that's the big thing. All I really care about is that you present your music well. Um, and by that, well, I mean, be specific. What does that mean to present your music well? I want it engraved to a pretty high degree of quality. I want um, a performer to be able to get your score uh, and just say, hey, this looks like real music, and I can understand what the composer wants. Not, hey, they use the Sibelius defaults. This looks awful, and I don't know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, let's go back a little bit here, mm-hmm. because there's other things you said in that little elevator pitch I'm still trying to... To parse out. Right, right, so that I can completely understand it, so everyone else can understand it, too. Yeah. Okay, so it's an online marketplace um, that composers can upload and then offer for sale their stuff. Yes. Do I keep ownership of everything I upload? 100%. So how do you act? Just as the middleman? Yeah, um, I'm basically, um, I'm the online Padelsons. Um, <laughs> you know, like I'm just the store. Um, that, that's all I do. Uh, one, one misunderstanding that I frequently get um, when, when I talk to people about this and when they ask about it, um, they think that New Music Shelf is a publisher and that New Music Shelf is going to, like a publisher, take some or all of the copyright. And that's the exact opposite of, of what's going on. Um, it's, uh, it's distribution, it's retail, um, where you just offer it for sale and, yeah, I'm, New Music Shelf is going to take a cut. It's going to take a small cut, and we'll talk about that. Um, but it, you retain all of the rights, and I just facilitate the sales. So you'll handle all of the payment processing, mm-hmm. uh, tax collection if it's needed, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yep, yep. All of that is handled totally by my software. Um, somebody comes, they say, "Oh, I want this piano trio by so and so." They click add to cart. They pay for it, and um, the money comes into New Music Shelf's you know, account, and it automatically uh, calculates the music shelf's cut, and it automatically calculates what goes to the composer, and it puts it in those places, and all I have to do is hit a button to pay you, which is wonderful. 
how do I get paid? Do I link a bank account or PayPal or how do you do that? You would link either a PayPal account or a Stripe account. Got it. So it's very easy. Um, the payouts are once a month and just the money goes straight into your account. You get a, a real-time uh, reporting for all of your sales. So as, as somebody buys something, you get an email right away. You can see what your, um, your commission is for the sale and you're making money on your works. Yay. Yay. So do I also get to see who bought it uh, with their contact info so I can do follow up? Yes, you can. That's one of the, awesome. the things that I've always, when I, so this, this business started actually in 2010. We should go back to 2010. I set this up. Um, and there's a long story about how I broke the software <laughs> uh, to make it work <laughs> right. And how that actually made the business not viable. And now I'm, redoing things. Um, but one of the things I always wanted was for composers who make a sale to be able to see who it is that bought their, their music, um, what their email is, like zip code, like basic information that you might need for just follow up to say thank you or, um, you know, or, to, or to target, like if they're going to like perform it, you know where they are. And you can help to get butts and seats on Facebook and Twitter. Like you can do that extra thing for them because they've been nice and bought your music. Okay. I like it. Yeah. I think that's great. And then uh, I mean, I think, you know, that helps the composer. And what makes me so excited about this is that I can build even more of a relationship with the people who are interested in my music. Yeah. And that's one of, like I've always said, that's one of the great benefits of publishing your own music is that there's not this barrier between the composer and the performer or, or you know, the purchaser of the score like there kind of is with traditional publishing where somebody goes to the local music store and they buy a thing and there's no way of knowing. Like the, the publisher doesn't even know who bought the thing and so they can't possibly tell you. Or if they buy it directly from the publisher, the publisher usually doesn't tell you anything. Oh yeah, they have no incentive to tell you. Yeah. They don't have any reason. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's kind of talk uh, dollars and cents here. Mm -hmm. What is the cut? Like how much money am I going to make for every dollar that someone spends? Okay. So, um the New Music Shelf's fee is 33% of each transaction plus 30 cents. Um which essentially breaks down to 30 cents goes to New Music Shelf and PayPal takes its cut. And then the remainder, which is the lion's share, um, goes to the composers. Okay, so if I've got, uh, I, I, let's just to use uh, rounded numbers here. So <laughs> if I've got a score for $10, mm -hmm. there, there's going to be 33%. So I'm going to get $6.66, but then we take off the 30 cent fee. So mm -hmm. I'm really going to get six dollars and 36 cents which yes. is still uh, about 55 percent greater than i would make on that same sale if i was with a traditional publisher mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's a it's a it's a much way mo most you know publishers you're going to get maybe 10 percent. so it's a yeah, yeah. it's a huge it's huge improvement and um to put this in perspective like uh I forget how many months ago, um, Kurt Connect and Jennifer Rosenblatt from Music Spoke were mm -hmm. here talking about Music Spoke, and this is very similar to what they do. These are very yes. similar businesses, um, and um, mine predates theirs by like four years. Um, but they've they've really like done some awesome stuff with with what they do. Like their choral music um, thing in particular is really good. Um, so still having my, my own business, I totally recommend them. <laughs> and you and I are both music spoke composers. Yeah, we are both. Yeah. Like they yep. sell my choral stuff and some other things. Um, it's wonderful. Cool. Okay. So let's say I've got music on my website already that mm -hmm. people are looking at. Do I have to pull it off my website if I put it up on new music shelf? No, no. Uh, like, like music spoke, um, Exclusivity is not a part of the equation. Um, it's like well, have it in multiple places. And that's yeah, okay. You, you absolutely should have it in multiple places. It's um, it's a, a thing that I think is really important um, with in terms of discoverability, like being a, being found by performers, being found by people who are looking for new music. The more places you have your music, 
the more visibility you have, the, the better chance you have of, of making a sale and getting performances. So I don't want to limit that at all. I, I really totally advocate um, keeping your music on your site, going through Music Spoke, going through JW Pepper, going through Sheet Music Plus, and, and going wide. Love it. That's awesome. How does this help me sell music, Dennis? Because that's the hardest part. Like I, <laughs> Writing music is hard. Uh, getting the commission is hard, but then writing it's hard. And then you have something that's done and it's been performed and hopefully mm-hmm. you've got a recording. And then you want the world to find it. And that's the hard part. So how does this help me? Well, one of the, the wonderful things about um, community, and I'm trying to, to build a community here around, around New Music Shelf, is the more people who are involved uh, and who are you know, active in saying, this is where my music is, the more eyes that come to the site and the more eyes that potentially fall on your works. So um, let's say, I always use like a piano trio as an example, so I'm just going to keep doing that because <laughs> it's comfortable. <laughs> so let's say Composer X has a piano trio on the site and Performer Y knows about it. And they say, you know what? I'm in a, a piano trio, so I'm going to check out this piece that I know is there and while I'm here, what else do they have? So they can very easily click on everything is categorized by instrumentation. So they can actually click on Piano Trio and see everything else on the site for that instrumentation. And, you know, or if you have a solo guitar piece, it's the same thing. Like someone else has a piece and, you know, a performer comes to look at it. They can then take the time to say, see what else is here. And, you know, it's sort of a almost word of mouth-ish. Um, but there's also some also bought things, kind of like Amazon that's going on on the site. There's a lot of similar works, you know, being able to see what else is there. Um, and one thing that I do, um, one question that I frequently get is, what will you do to market my music? And mm-hmm. the answer to that is, to market your music, nothing. But to market portions of the catalog that you have music in, a lot. So Garrett Hope, you're on the site. Aside from when you join the site, me saying, you know, on Facebook and Twitter, hey, Garrett's on the site. You should really check out his music. This is great. Here are some pieces that he has. Um, beyond that, I'm not going to push your music directly. I sort of think of, of this as like an Amazon thing where like you should be marketing your music. But let's say you have a piece for clarinet and piano. I have this outlet um, I have a, an open invitation to a clarinet-based podcast, and I can <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, <laughs> wink, wink. And this is actually the thing that I've been telling everybody who joins: like, get some clarinet stuff on the on the site now. Um, I have this open invitation to go over to Clarinet and talk to that audience and say, "Hey, there's a bunch of stuff for clarinet on New Music Shelf," and I can really push that that catalog and I can create special pages for clarinetists to check out and and really highlight individual pieces or, or, you know, pieces with a particular instrumentation. You know, I can do the same thing with violists. I can do it with, you know, whatever instrument I or ensemble, I can then market all of these Piro plus Piro plus pieces to Piro plus ensembles. And if you have that in there, that's going to get marketed with everything else that's there. Sure. It's kind of like when Hal Leonard sends out their catalog of new orchestra music or yeah. new band works mm-hmm. or choral works. Yeah, it's, it's like really it's market based. It's not individual based. Got it. But the burden of actually marketing those compositions is still mine as the composer. Well, you're going to be pushing your own music anyway. So, Absolutely. so what, basically what I'm asking um, in terms of your own marketing efforts you don't have to be like, hey, go to New Music Shelf because, you know, this piece is there and keep hammering that over and over and over. But continue to market your pieces as you normally would. And make sure to link to, to if your piece is on New Music Shelf, make sure to link there so people can know where to get it. Yeah. And uh, with that, um, I've had a few people who I've invited to the site. They've said, oh, no, I can already sell things on my own site. It's all right. And, you know, with going wide, I, I think that, you know, the, the one thing that I always have to, like, bite my tongue 
with and not say as well, then people have to know who you are to find your music. If you're only going <laughs> to sell it on your site, then you know, you're yeah. not getting the benefit of you know, a, a community and other people coming in. So if you do sell your music on your own site, this is an additional outlet. Right. And if you're not tech savvy enough to sell stuff on your own site, because that, that can be a challenge. That can be terrifying for some people. And it can be a headache for real. Yeah, it really can be. Um, this takes away that headache. This allows you to like, sell things online in a way that, like, oh, you don't have to do order fulfillment. You don't have to do the tech part of setting up e-commerce and linking in Stripe and Payment PayPal. processing. Yeah. Reporting, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Speaking of fulfillment, which is interesting, um, I'm curious, do you offer just PDFs for sale or are you also offering hard copies? Is that up to the composer? What's the deal there? It's currently digital only, so it's only PDFs. You know, okay. uh, not, not Sibelius files, not finale files, because people, like, not everybody is going to have notation software available if they're just a performer. Um, or the right version. Yeah, exactly. Um, so... PDFs are what I do. I'm, I have an offer, um, or the beginnings of an offer, from a major printer that may take that on. They're, they're offering to do order fulfillment. We just don't know that they haven't offered terms yet. That We've opened, opened some talks. So right now, and let's just say for the foreseeable future, it is digital only. There won't be print. Um, that's something that, um, you know, you'll still probably have to handle yourself or you know, have a, a deal with a printer or something. Um, but a lot of people are really going after digital right now because it's easy. They can mm -hmm. just download the file. They don't have to wait for you to print it out, bind it, get to the post office, have it show up, show up in the mail, <laughs> hopefully not get lost. This way it's like click buy. And the, the download is automatic. They have immediate access. It's not. Um, it's not like I have to go in and, like, okay, this order is done. Click. You can have the file now. <laughs> so I know this is something that Kurt and Jennifer um, and all online distribution places have to wrestle with. But how do you handle uh, digital rights management or permissions to print multiple copies? And third question that's related, mm -hmm. how do you, if at all, prevent piracy of the PDFs? This is a whole podcast unto itself. <laughs> the, I actually, yeah, I, I want to talk piracy in, in a, an upcoming episode because I think it's, it's, it's huge uh, to talk about and not because I think it's a problem. Um, so what, to just flat out answer your first question, um, New Music Shelf uh, doesn't limit printing and doesn't um, limit the number of downloads. However, every PDF that goes out uh, is, gets a stamp at the bottom of every page with the name of the person who purchased it, along with the date. And um, in the, the confirmation email, there is, is the terms of service, which is a, um, it's a copying license. So you have a license to copy only the number, only enough, well, it depends, actually, it depends on what kind of music you're purchasing. If you're buying choral music and you have a choir of 40 people, the site is very clear, you need to purchase 40 copies. One for every active member of the ensemble. Um, if, you're, if your choir grows to 50, you need to buy an additional 10 copies. Um, that's spelled out in the terms of service. Uh, if you have again, a piano trio, the copying license allows you to make sufficient copies of the score and parts to prepare and perform the work for your ensemble only. So it's very clear, this is for you, this license is not transferable, it's not assignable, you can't sell it, you can't gift it, you can't, you know, do, you can't give this away to other people, you can't loan it, it's for you only. And if you do that, you're in violation of the terms of service. And with the person's name at the bottom of every page, <laughs> if that score gets emailed or photocopied or just given away, we know where it came from. Got it. 
I'm thinking here of a real world situation and let's say um, at university and you've got this like string trio and the chamber music coach or one of the professors has purchased this for their personal library. Mm -hmm. They want their students to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And let's say this, this person doesn't purchase the additional copies and they start giving it away. And you know, every, every season this happens. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, over four years, that's a, quite a number of students who now have received these copies for free. And this is kind of part of the piracy in academia that happens mm-hmm. all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, part of this, I'm trying to do some education with this as well, you know, with the, with the terms of service. And, and you know, I'll be, I'll be reaching out to people and, and being in, in touch with them as, as the business owner to make sure that they, they kind of understand this stuff. Um, there's a, this might turn some people off and that's fine. Um, but I'm a, I'm a big believer in two things. A, don't treat your customers like thieves when they're giving you money. <laughs> that's, it's, that's a turn off for them. Um, you, you should trust some people. People are getting a lot more scrupulous about these things, especially when the composer reaches out and says, thank you for buying this. And you put a face to to the music so that it's not like, oh, well, this is Mozart. He's dead. We can photocopy stuff. It's not going to hurt him. Um, it's like, this is Garrett Hope. He said, thank you. I, <laughs> I'm going to feel really bad. Also, with my name attached to every copy, you know, like my name is going to get out there a lot <laughs> in a bad way. Um, and there's a big question. I said this in front of the Music Publishers, Music Publishers Association like annual luncheon a few weeks ago, um, and I hope it ruffled some feathers. Uh, composers have, we can fight, we need to fight the battle of piracy, but in what's more important, fighting piracy or fighting obscurity? And if a student has a, you know, the piano trio, A, do they have a piano trio to perform it with? And B, okay, yeah, it sucks that you're not getting the the royal the 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 payment for the score. But if they're gonna perform it, you're probably gonna get a performance royalty. So you're getting something, and that might lead to more sales. Mm -hmm. Now this is this is a big battle and not everybody's gonna like hearing that. And that's my personal uh, philosophy on this. Um, and I have lots, lots, lots of other thoughts in that area. But basically, you know, being communicative with performers, making sure that we know where the, the copies came from, like, you know, having the name on it, um, and just making sure that the pieces are accessible and affordable in a way that, like, still values the music, but doesn't make it, like, I have to steal it because I can't afford it. Like, those, those are going to help prevent piracy a lot. I agree. I think it's good. I, I think this is, has some potential to be really, really interesting. And I don't know a student who doesn't want to support the composer anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, this reminds me of your latest call for scores, actually, because yes. it's mostly related, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's dig into this. So, so let's just set this up here. You just put out a huge call for scores. It's, yes. it's on. Oh, and we should say this too. Mm-hmm. Both of us on our podcast just entered into a strategic partnership arrangement with the American Composers Forum. So yeah. composers of all types. Go to ComposersForum.org and check out this organization. If you're not already a member, there are so many benefits to you. They have programs Mm -hmm. and grants and educational services to Mm -hmm. help you build your career. And uh, we're Dennis and I are going to partner with them to create more and to promote these kinds of opportunities. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest benefits I've gotten out of being an ACF member is that they curate the most up-to-date and extensive list of composer opportunities. Mm-hmm. You just put an opportunity on there. I just did, and I just re-upped my membership. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, it's, it, it's, you know, sometimes it lapses, but, um, but yeah, it's, like, it's an affordable membership, so you should be a member. Um, yeah, I just put up uh, this big call for scores, um, and... It's so funny, like talking like about these things that I'm doing. There's part of me that's like, this is a rah rah for Dennis's businesses. But like, the, I like to think that these things are like they're very community based. Like this, this is for composers. It's not for like 
Dennis's businesses. <laughs> well, it's not like you're only scratching your itch. Yeah. This yeah. is actually, well, we'll get there, but this will have great benefit to all the people who participate. Yeah. This I'm, I am so super stoked about this. I've been talking about this uh, at every opportunity with, with people. And I know a lot of composers are really excited. Um, so uh, I don't forget how many months ago in the, the music spoke uh, Facebook group, somebody asked the question like, so I know this, this voice teacher who she really wants her students to get to know more new vocal music but she has no idea where to look. Like, where can she find stuff written by, like, self-published composers? Like, where, where is that? And the answer was basically, well, you kind of have to know the composers and then go to their websites and look at their stuff. And it's, this, it's the same problem that we were talking about earlier of, yeah, you, people kind of have to know who you are. Um, and Because they're teaching out of the 24 Italian... Aria's yeah, book. Yeah. Or, and there's like a just a small handful of 20th century art song composers that get sung all the time. Mm -hmm. And most of those compositions are 50 or 60 years old now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like it, it's either the, the um, I always want to say like the really politically incorrect um, name for the 24 Italian songs in Aria's, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no ethnic slurs today. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's either like the, I'll shorten it, the double dozen ditties, um, or it's Ned Roram, or, I mean, Jake Heggie, he's, you know, younger than, than Ned, um, or Jason Robert Brown, and that's sort of it. Maybe a little Libby Larson. Um, and Jason Robert Brown, that, I mean, that's very musical theater oriented, it's less yeah. operatic. Mm -hmm. But anyway, continue. So, you know, I, I saw this thing in, in the Facebook group, and I said, oh, Anthologies, that's where they find it. Somebody just has to make them. And I thought, who has a company that is like composer forward and is all about getting people's music out there? Oh, me. <laughs> so um, basically, in 2018, New Music Shelf, which is, it's funny, I keep saying New Music, music Shelf is not a publisher, but in 2018, New Music Shelf will kind of become a publisher. Uh, the company is going to put out four anthologies of new vocal music by self-published composers. Um, each anthology will have 20 songs in it uh, and will be for a specific, specific voice type. So there will be one volume for soprano, one for mezzo-soprano, one for tenor, one for baritone. Um, so that's 80 friggin' songs that um, we're going to be publishing and putting out there for voice, primarily targeting voice teachers and their students who, I mean, get them while they're young, right? Like, mm -hmm. get, get this stuff in front of them while they're, they're still young and impressionable. Um, and so <clears throat> I've brought on um, several professional singers who will be curating each volume. So the soprano volume will be curated by a soprano. A mezzo, the mezzo volume will be curated by a mezzo, uh, et cetera. And... When I talked to the curators, um, their, their, their faces lit up. I was like saying, this is what I want to do, so do you want to be a part of this? And their faces lit up, and they said, I've wanted this for like five years. <laughs> and I, like, every voice teacher I know wants this. So we're, we're pulling in submissions. We're, we're soliciting submissions in this big call for scores for, uh, for art songs. Um, Voice and piano or solo voice, like that's it. Acoustic music, um, just that instrumentation, under 10 minutes uh, to be a part of these anthologies. So can I ask a question here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I have um, some art song that I'm really proud of and I'd like to submit, but they're part of a cycle or a larger work. Mm -hmm. Do I need to pull excerpts out or, to, or is it a single thing? Can I submit two or three as long as I fit under the 10 minutes? So um, you can submit up to two songs per voice type. So songs, not cycles. However, so well, so if you have like one song for soprano that's eight minutes, another song for soprano that's five minutes, great, submit them both. Um, and you can submit, so two soprano, two mezzo, two tenor, two baritone. That's, that's what you, the maximum you could submit. 
um, if it's from a cycle or from a set, excerpt it. Like if it's excerptable, if it can stand on its own. Personally, I want composers to do that rather than send a standalone song. Um, Why? Uh, I, I see these anthologies as um, big, big, big marketing opportunities for composers. And if you send a standalone five minute song, um, that may, people may like it. And some of them may go and look for the rest of your catalog, but that may actually be the end of their curiosity. But if you send a, you know, a song from a cycle or from a set, that's going to be in the anthology. So if, if like, let's say, let's just use a, a song that I've written, uh, The Gallant Weaver from And He'll Be Mine. If that ends up in one of those anthologies, it's going to say, from And He'll Be Mine, The Gallant Weaver. Will you also put on there to, to find more information or the rest of the set go to? Yes, th there will be lots of information about how to find a composer's works. Uh, every composer will have, um, at the very least, a half-page bio with website links. And, you know, I, I think I even want to put their Twitter, Twitter handle in this thing because uh, that's a, a way that we communicate today, um, like if you are on Twitter and want to do that. Um, but I'm, I really want to make all of everything that, that composers have in there really um, findable on the internet. That's awesome. So, I need to go pull some excerpts out then and send them off. I, I think you do. <laughs> when, when does this close, Dennis? This closes at the end of August. So it, as we record this, it's August 7th. As I release this, it's probably August 8th. Um, so you still have most of the month of August 2017 to get these in. Um, I'm already getting quite a few submissions, which is really friggin' exciting. Um, I'm getting some great um, some great questions from people uh, about about this, and I'm 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 really hoping that these take off because I really want all this vocal music out there in the world. I do too. I mean, if I had the opportunity to get people to even look at my music, mm -hmm. and then hopefully choose to perform it in a recital or yeah. at Nats or whatever, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, and you know. Who am I going to be marketing to? Like the people at Nats. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that's a, that's a no brainer. And I, cur I currently have a list of 900 voice teachers that I will be. And so for those people who don't know, can you define Nats? Uh, the National Association of Teachers of Singing. So these are the people in the university training future generations of singers, mm -hmm. make rep decisions for their students. Mm hmm. Yeah, like my, my voice teacher in undergrad, he would love this, and he would be constantly assigning stuff out of it because he, he had um, Ned Roram's 14 Songs on American Poetry and was just always saying, sing this, sing that, <laughs> sing, sing, sing out of this. It's like the most recent stuff I kind of know. Um, and this So uh, like we talked about if just a few minutes ago, this, this uh, instructor, this private lesson teacher will have to purchase their own copy. And then mm -hmm. rather than just photocopying scores and getting them out, which is a notorious problem in the vocal studio, mm -hmm. each student would then need to buy their copy. Would they have to buy the whole anthology or can they just buy the specific song? It'll be, um, well, we'll be pushing the anthology. Um, I sort of hope this is not a requirement by any means. Um, I will never require this, but you know, if, if the composers who are in the anthologies like also have their stuff available on New Music Shelf, they can like excerpt stuff and make it available for sale separate from from the anthologies. Um, I'm hoping that everybody buys the anthologies, um, and they'll be priced uh, twenty four ninety nine. I already know like a lot of this stuff, so it's going to be really, um, really affordable for a college student. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not outrageous. Um, I, I know that some anthologies out there, oh God, I saw one the other day for $75. Like, can you imagine being an, an undergrad spending $75 for anything? Yeah. Well, they're <laughs> spending $150 on their theory textbook. And yeah. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it, it's really, it's, it's crazy. So, I'm tr you know, I've done this whole balancing thing of um, keeping the price reasonable for, for students. And making sure that um, composers get a good royalty. So let's talk royalty because yeah. I'm assuming that these uh, vocalists who are helping you curate and edit down mm -hmm. these anthologies, they, they need to get some sort of 
cut of the pie mm-hmm. for their time. So does that come out of my 66% or how, how is it redistributed for these anthologies? Well, these anthologies, because this is, now this is a very different pricing structure from regular new music shelf stuff. So okay. what's, what's happening, um, there, I'm 95% sure that there will be digital editions of these anthologies, but more importantly, I'm going to be pushing the hell out of the print editions. There will actually be print editions of this. I will be warehousing many copies of these things in my apartment to mail them out. Um, and they'll be available on Amazon. Um, so the way this, this works, so they're going to sell for, um, I'm just going to be completely transparent here in, in the finances, <laughs> um, $25, $24.99 um, to purchase the thing. Out of that $24.99, right off the bat, will come printing costs, you know, reasonable production costs, um, which right now I think is about like five or six dollars a copy. Um, then the curators will will earn a royalty on every copy sold, and that will come out um, of the of the, the gross. Mm-hmm. The remainder, which is around, it's like eighteen or nineteen dollars. So, um, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but it's it's. A lot gets split down the middle. New Music Shelf keeps fifty percent of that, so that you know we can keep doing these. <laughs> you know, keep keep the lights on and, and continue to do these because this is a long term project, and we'll talk about that. Uh, then the remaining fifty percent is split amongst the twenty composers in that anthology. So the royalty. Um, I know that the numbers that I mentioned don't quite add up, but basically, right now the royalty is looking to be about fifty cents per copy for each composer. Cool. I'm thinking right now, Dennis, about the copyright. So if each composer who's selected can still owns the copyright for their piece. Yeah, and that, that's, a, that's a, 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 again, still separate from, from the regular New Music Shelf thing. But composers still, even though like this is being published, like literally mm-hmm. published by New Music Shelf, um, it's like a short story collection or a poetry anthology. So composers still retain their full copyright to everything. So it's more like between New Music Shelf and the composer at that point, it's more of a licensing agreement. Yes. It's, um, okay. it's, it's an a, uh, anthology right. It's a very Got specific it. license that, um, yeah, you retain full copyright. You can do whatever you want. with. You can sell that song individually all you want. You can sell that song as part of the cycle all you want. In fact, do it. I'm hoping to push sales to you through this, these anthologies. Um, yeah, it's all, you own everything. And so how many songs approximately per volume of the anthologies are you hoping to have? Uh, we're planning on having 20 songs per anthology. And with, so with four volumes, that's 80 songs that we'll be publishing. So the, it, it's, you need to get a piece on there. Well, ideally it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. The, there, there's so many slots for... For composers in here, like there's, this is not a traditional call for scores, where you know, a hundred people send something, the ensemble picks one, maybe an honorable mention, performs the piece once, and that's the end of your relationship. Like this is, you know, we're picking eighty songs, um, publishing it, marketing it to pe- you know teachers and their students and professionals uh, around the country and paying you, a, paying you a royalty for every sale. Yeah, and then pushing you back to your website to make more yes. sales. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah. That's so great. And so um, you said earlier that you hope to do multiple volumes of these. So mm-hmm. uh, what's the time frame going to be between um, volume one, which will come out 2018, you mm-hmm. said, and then volume two. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on, sure on that yet. Part of like this is this is a pilot program. You know, this new initiative. This it's a pilot program, and we're going to be gauging the success of it and and deciding from there. I'll be able to gauge the success by the end of January. We're going to start pre sales. Uh, excuse me. Uh, in December, and um, launching the first vo- the soprano volume in January, and we'll release one every three months. 
Um, so based on pre-sales and the initial sales of the Soprano volume, I'll be able to gauge the success very quickly and know, you know, A, if we're continuing this, um, and B, like how, how soon we'll, we'll do the next vocal um, anthologies and how soon and how hard um, we'll expand into instrumental music. Got it. So I have plans to take over the world with this and really do like, you know, on a rolling basis, you know, volumes for flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, saxophone, you know, like basically every major instrument in the orchestra and then some like some of the, the, you know, like euphonium too. Um, We'd have a countertenor volume at some point Um, and really like, make sure that all this music that we're writing is seen by the people who need to see it. I love it. Is there anything else that uh, I didn't ask you about, but it's really important or you're getting lots of questions concerning? Well, one thing that we haven't covered is beyond the anthologies there. um, You know, like I said, it's not just sort of a one and done thing. Um, The curators whose names I'm not going to, you know, Divulge. I think that they've been saying like to people, "Hey, I'm doing this," but I just won't do it here because I want to give them a few, you know, a little bit of time to like not be bothered. Um, you know, bother me with questions. I, I, I will. I've been filtering questions to my curators. So, like, set, please, um, new music shelf at at Gmail or Dennis at or D Tabensky at Gmail or uh, music publishing podcast at Gmail. All those email addresses. Send me questions. Um, Beyond that, all of the curators have committed to performing all 20 songs of each anthology in a concert, like multiple concerts, you know, not just like 80 songs in one concert, but like four concerts um, in New York. So we'll have, you know, four big concerts. We'll have uh, live recordings of those uh, available for composers to use on their websites and, um, you know, for Anything they need, it's, it's there as a resource. Then each of the curators is going to go into the studio and record all 20 songs from their, their anthology, which will be bundled with the anthologies as a companion CD and sold independently as an album. And that will earn composers royalties too. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like my whole thing, I mean... We know through this podcast, I want composers to do well. This is me, like, really not just saying, hey, you can make money as a composer, but saying, hey, here's how you can make money as a composer. Here's a thing for you, and not just, like, one of you, and here's 250 bucks and a crappy performance, but, like, here's a publication, an album, you know, all this, and, and like, royalties, I think it's great. Yeah. Wow. Dennis, this is pretty exciting. I'm super excited. Uh, can you tell? <laughs> I can tell. One thing we should cover is uh, how can people submit pieces to this? Uh, we know that it closes at the end of this month, mm-hmm. uh, but where do they need to go? Is there a URL you can send them to? Or Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to make, let's see, I'll make a special, um, special URL for you guys. So newmusicshelf.com, you can sort of check out the site in general, and um, there's some links there to how to like, sell your stuff if you want. Um, newmusicshelf.com slash call. And that will get you, um, that will get you the instructions. So it, it's really straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, please Please ask. I would rather that you ask a question and submit the right thing than just assume and submit something that I'm going to disqualify you for. Um, <laughs> you don't want to be disqualified. You don't want to be disqualified. It, it makes me sad. Um, I've had some people ask questions like, can I submit something? Like, oh, I have a, I have a, a song. It's, it's soprano, piano, and horn. Can I submit that? The answer is no. Um, it's only... Solo voice, its own, or voice and piano. No extra instruments. No electronic elements. Um, I'll do that separately. Um, that will be that will be another thing. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, like go to newmusicshelf.com/call. Read everything. Let me know if you have questions, and I'm totally happy to answer it. And if you have that question, somebody else has that question too. So I'm probably going to like update the instructions for everybody else. 
to make sure that we're all on the same page and we all can like not send in something that disqualifies you. Because <laughs> right. there's nothing more like frustrating. I've done, I've put out calls for, calls for scores on and off over the years, like many many years, like since back since like 2007. A good quarter or up to so many things just don't fit the the submission requirements. So read the instructions. <laughs> Say say one more time. Read the instructions, please. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's totally like to your benefit. Um, not trying to like squeeze you out. I'm trying to make sure that um, that this is the best the best thing for for singers. The best thing, you know. So they keep coming back and and wanting the next volume and the next volume. And if you're not in the first one, there's probably going to be a second and a third and a fourth. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. Dennis, this is awesome. I'm I'm so excited. I can't I can't stop talking about this thing. It's really kind of embarrassing. I'm like I'm, I'm getting glad you're excited about it though. Yeah. Like I could I could go into all the numbers and it would be really dorky. Um but just today I got um I ordered a sample of the the what the book will be like. From a the printing company, it's gorgeous. Mm. Like it, it's it's not the music, obviously, or anything. It's just like this is what the paper's like, and it's so just luxurious. And <laughs> this is what the cover's like, and it's just the binding. It's oh, it's gonna be beautiful. Great. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get the word out. Yeah, so everybody, yeah, check out newmusicshelf.com slash call. Um, oh, one thing that we didn't talk about, let's just go back to New Music Shelf in general real quick. Um, sure. Some of the, the cool things. So there's some sites sort of like New Music Shelf that you have to pay a yearly fee to be a part of, or um, one of them you have to pay per piece that you upload. There's none of that here. It's, you know... Just email me, say, hey, um, just introduce yourself, you know, be cool. Um, send me a couple copies of your scores so I can like check out your music. Um, and and you're, you're in, you know, like it may take me a little bit to get to it, but you're in. And then once you're like part of the site, you upload everything yourself. You set your own prices. Um, it's all, there's so much control on your end. Like I'm not going to set the prices for you. I have resources to help you set those prices if that scares you, which it probably does. Um, I have ways to make that not scary. Um, so yeah, there's like the only fees are like the transaction fees, and you have so much control. Love it, Steve. I like having born. control. Yeah. What does that sound? I just had sound. Is that yeah, my a video auto loaded. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray for weird sounds. Um, yeah, so do that. That's your. That's the call to action for this week. Check that out. Um, if you know, if you don't have art songs, let your composer friends know who do have art songs. Because the and more, they do. I promise you. Yeah, there, there's tons out there. Um, yeah. Do it. Let's make this like the best thing ever, and so so we can get get our music in front of a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of people. I like that. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be participating. I just got to get my acting gear and get stuff. Good, good, good. Up on new music shelf for one, mm -hmm. and then uh, submit it to the anthology project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Sweet. Well, thank you, Garrett, for for facil facilitating um, my blathering about like the things that I think are exciting about making our community better. Yeah, that's what you and I are all about. Yeah, I appreciate it, and I appreciate everybody listening, as always. Um, I promise I'll get more episodes out this summer. <laughs> it's been a crazy summer. Um, so, yeah, th thank you again. It has been a crazy summer. It's been, yeah, you just like had a computer crazy thing happen. Oh my gosh! Yes, blog post about it. Did you see that? Oh no, I didn't. I'll, no. I'll I'll link to that in the show notes. I'll also link to the call for scores oh, and everything in, no, in the show. Notes. Oh, but it's fun. <laughs> it 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 yeah, it's a silly thing. Um, yeah, all this will be linked to in the show notes. Um, the application I think is really easy. 
for the anthologies um, you have till the end of August. So again, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Garrett. And um, I will talk to you next time.